check one two check one two one two three four Good morning, I'm Huey Davis. I pastor here at Birmingham First. It's so good to see you. Glad that you're here. Glad that you're watching online. And it's great to be in the house of the Lord with you. Uh, we're going to turn our attention to Him and give Him the praise and glory that we owe Him. And we're going to allow Him to speak to us. This morning we'll uh, be receiving the Lord's Supper. If you're at home, you have plenty of time to get together some uh, juice and bread to participate with us, and it's just a good day to be with you and in, your, and in the presence of the Lord together. Father, we thank you this morning that we have this opportunity to be in your house, to be surrounded by your presence, to know that you've been waiting on us to show up and to open our hearts and minds to you. So fill us now, we pray, with your Holy Spirit. Be very close to us today. Would you watch over us? Hear from us, and we pray, Lord God, that we will respond to your presence, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call, and 
Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me? It's amazing. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call? And is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me? It's amazing. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. God Almighty, Lord of glory, you have called me friend. God Almighty, Lord satisfies my longings through his blood I now am saved all my life long I had panted for a drink from some cool spring that I hoped would quench the burning of the thirst I felt within Hallelujah, I have found him whom my soul so long has craved. Jesus satisfies my longings through his blood I now am saved. Well of water ever springing, bread of life so rich and free. Untold well that never failed, my Redeemer is to me. Hallelujah, I have found him whom my soul so long has craved. Jesus satisfies my longings through his blood.
Take your Bibles and turn with me to Ephesians chapter 1. I'm going to read verses 1 and 2. It's good to be with you this morning. Glad that you're here. Glad that you're in this place. I'm going to talk to you this morning about the Holy Ones. Paul, writing in Ephesians, says this. Paul, an apostle of Christ, Jesus, by the will of God, to the saints in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he writes to the church at Corinth, in chapter 1, verses 25 through 27. I have become its servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness, the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the saints. To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Well, we could turn to the first chapter in Romans and hear the same type of greeting. Paul says, to the saints, to the saints. Let me just define the word saints for you this morning. Saints are those who are set apart to God in a saving relationship to him through Jesus. And do this, and through this relationship, they partake of his nature, so that in a very real sense, they are the holy ones. Consecration, that is the setting apart, and purity are the basic meaning of the terms. In other words, a saint is someone who has been set apart and purified by God to be his person. So, how are saints described? Well, some describe saints as high-level Christians. That they are someone, a believer, who has ascended the normal rank and file and have become an elevated person. Someone that you would look up to and, and turn to. That they have um, a place that is higher than the average believer. Other people say that saints are Christians with superpowers. Now, you have to be careful in these days with all the Marvel uh, movies and stuff, or the books, if you read the books, don't go to the movies. All these superpowers that exist out of there. The superpower that I've always wanted to, to have, I've wanted to be taller. But some people believe that saints are just Christians that have superpowers. Some believe that... that um, Saints are Christians, and they are perfect in every way. That if Mary Poppins was to measure them, she would take her tape measure out and say, nearly perfect in every way. They are without blemish. They don't do anything wrong. Others would say that saints or sainthood is unattainable for most believers. You just can't get there. Well... How are Christians, how are saints described in God's Word? All Christians are saints. All believers are saints. When Paul writes to the Ephesians, to the Corinthians, to the Romans, and a bunch of other of his uh, letters, when he says to them, to the saints, he's not talking about a select few. He's talking about any believer who has a saving relationship with Jesus and have been restored in fellowship with God. So, we are the saints. All of us are saints. Individually, we are a saint. So, why the disparity between the two? Why do some feel like they're elevated and, and higher up than a normal believer? Well, some have misused the word and have created a super class of Christians. They have designated some because of what they have done or what they are doing as people who have ranked higher, achieved more, in some way have been selected to do more than the regular believer. But that's not what the Word of God says. The Word of God says anyone who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ has found salvation in Him, who have been restored to the kingdom of God through Him, is a saint. Because we have been set apart. We are the holy ones. 
consecrated and set apart for God's service. The, the word that is actually translated as saint are holy ones. Hagiazo, it's holy one. And that they have come out of the world, yet they're still in the world. And God has reasonings for that because what does it mean for me to be a saint? Well, we belong to God. We belong to him. We are his people. The kingdom of God is where we belong. And heaven is where we are headed. In some places we talk about we are sojourners on this earth and that one day we'll go back to where we belong, and that is heaven with God. So we belong to God. We don't belong to the United States of America. We don't belong to any country on earth. We don't belong to a state, not to a political party. Our first and really our only allegiance is to God. With that said, you still have to pay your taxes, both federal and state. You have to vote. You need to vote in elections and all the other stuff that citizens are expected to do. So I was coming to church this morning, and, you know, I'm a chaplain now because I've gone through the training. I'm going to get my shirt really soon, and I'm going to wear it everywhere I go. And, and I, I have a handcuff key on my keychain now because in a really bad situation, it unlocks the the stuff in the back of a police car you might need. They said in training, if you ever have to do that, it's really, really a bad day. So in my efforts to be good, a good chaplain, when I drive the, the 31 north, I drive at 40 miles an hour. Now, how do you know that I drive at 40 miles an hour? Well, the speed limit says, speed limit, not speed suggestion, says 40 miles an hour. And I'm really, really religiously working on this. So I set my cruise control at 40 miles an hour. 39? No, no, no. 41? Oh, that's too much. 40 miles an hour. So I set my, to this morning, coming up, I set my speed at 40 miles an hour. And right behind me pulls a cruiser, a police cruiser from Vestavia Hills Police Department. And you know what I said? I'm doing exactly 40 miles. Not that he heard me, but I'm just saying. You know, I just want everybody, I want everybody around to know I'm driving 40 because I'm a good citizen. Because I have responsibility as a citizen the whole way up. And do you know who else was doing 40 miles an hour? Not anyone else on that road. I was the only one on that road doing 40 miles. He was having to do 39 because it was uphill and he was behind me. So we have responsibilities to the state, and to the government we, that we are in the country of, but we belong to God. And there's a reason for that. We are God's ambassadors. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 through 21. Here's Paul explaining it to us. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are, therefore, Christ ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. We are, therefore, Christ ambassadors. We have a reason why we're here, and the wording that is used is important. I don't know how much you know about the ambassadors and embassies of our country, but it is a fascinating study. Ambassadors and the embassies that they serve in, wherever in the world they are, are the authority of the United States. When you go to that country and you see the embassy, 
walled, gated, guarded, and they're guarded by Marines because Marines are used to being surrounded by the enemy. Marines are used to being all by themselves, and, and they are the guards of that embassy. When you see any footage, when someone is trying to overtake an embassy, it's the Marines you see standing there with the guns, the weapons, protecting the property of the United States. Because that embassy ground in the buildings, they all belong to the United States of America. That, that, that doesn't belong to that host country. It belongs to our country. The same for them when they have embassies in our country. Their land is their land. That property belongs to them. Their uh, diplomats are under the laws of their own country, not under the laws that we have. So that building and that property, it states the authority of the nation. The land and buildings, they belong to the U.S. government. And when the ambassador speaks, he speaks for our nation. When he speaks, he's not speaking for himself, but he is speaking as if the president or the Senate and, and the House were speaking, our government were speaking. He represents us. So, they there is that representation of the country that they do. All of the employees, the Marines, everyone, when they are there, they represent the beliefs of the United States of America. They also represent the lifestyle of the United States of America. These men, these women who have given themselves to this type of profession are very professional people. And they are well aware of what they say could influence the people around them. So, so it is with us as saints. We are the ambassadors of our king. We represent the kingdom of God here on earth wherever we are located. And the ground that we stand on is holy ground. We represent God and we represent his kingdom. And where we stand, we are standing for him. And when we speak, we are speaking for God. When we share our faith, we are being led by the Holy Spirit, given words by the Holy Spirit to accurately talk to someone about the love of God and the forgiveness that he offers. We'll let that sink in just for a second. When you speak to that person at work, where you speak to them is not the office. It is the very land that belongs to God because you're standing on it. And you are his representative. You are, you are representing the beliefs of the kingdom of God, and you are representing the lifestyle of the life of the kingdom of God. When we speak, we speak for him. Where we stand, we stand for him. And we represent the beliefs and the lifestyle of the kingdom of God. This is why we are saints. This is why he has pulled us out of the world by forgiveness and purified us and set us apart to be his holy ones wherever we go. And wherever we go and wherever we stand, we stand with the authority of God. It's kind of heady, isn't it? I mean, you think about that. When someone says, what would you do? Huey, what would you do in this situation? I now have been asked to represent God and to say, this is not what I would do. I'm not going to say that. I'm going to tell them this is what I would do. But what I'm saying is, this is what God would have me to do. In, in this situation, this is how I think you should respond. Because sometimes when people say stuff to me, I would like to respond with the back of my hand. Have you ever been there? Because I think this carries knowledge and wisdom in it, the back of my hand. And sometimes I just need to apply a little wisdom and knowledge. Hey, don't look at me like that. You've done it too. You're the reason they put horns on cars. Not me. I just happen to get one, okay? But when I speak, I don't speak for myself. I have to speak for the living God, the God of all creation, 
the God that made all of this and watches over all of this, who's interested in every person, and especially this person who has asked. And God has, at that moment, chosen me. And when God uses you at that moment, he's chosen you to stand there and to speak for him. you, you got to think about that. We'll cheer for an athletic team. We'll rally on, on some child that's doing some great thing. But God is asking us to speak for him. It's so much higher, well, it's a great compliment, and a higher responsibility than anything else we do. We're speaking for him. They come to you and they say, hey, and, and I bet they've said this to you. I know you're a Christian because we represent the beliefs and the lifestyle. You can't help but see it as you live like you should live. And I'd like for you to pray for it. I, I walked in this morning and there was all this, what I thought was trash on the altar. I'm like, who's trash in my altars? Because they belong to me. So well, who's trash in my altars? And then I realized, you know, what that, you know what those are? Those are the prayer requests from the people of the foundry who have said, hey, could you pray about this? And they, Pat, build a... a a western wall where they can stick them in the western wall. And, but they're not doing any good down there. We need to bring them up here. So this morning when we go to our prayer time, it may be that you want to pick one of those up and, and just read it and then pray for it while we're praying. We have plenty of time. We can do that kind of stuff. People will come to you and say, would you pray for me? Every, every week, every time those guys or those girls are over, we say, is there anything we can pray with you about? And they write stuff down. So we need to be praying for that. So when people come up to you, they realize that you're an ambassador of the kingdom of God, and they want you to take their problem, their need, their situation, their trauma, their sadness, their joy, whatever. They want you to take it back to the host country, to the kingdom of God, to the Lord Jesus Christ, to the Lord God Almighty. They, are, they understand, and they may understand better than we do, of what we represent. And maybe they don't tr have a complete understanding and a complete, uh, a complete trust and belief in the Lord Jesus Christ, but they know that you do, that I do. Is that not amazing? When we speak, we speak for God. We represent the beliefs and the lifestyle of the kingdom of God. And today, we have an opportunity to meet with the king of the kingdom. He's stopping by. We're going to pass out, distribute the elements, and we're going to have time when that's going on that you can meet with him. Now, this is not a job review. This is not a correction, necessarily a correction time. It may be, but really what it is is you're checking in with the home office. You're checking in with the Lord God and saying, Lord, is there anything in me that's offensive to you? Lord, is there anyone I need to be speaking to that you've pushed and prodded and nudged and shoved, but I have not taken the hint? Is there anything like that? It may be that you say, Lord, you know that we, because you're with him, we are going through this. I just want to remind you of that. You know, um, I had a friend that said his wife was nagging him. Pastor, what can I do? I said, what's the thing? She said, well, she asked me six months ago to fix the drip in the bathroom, and every four or five weeks she's been reminding me and nagging me that I haven't fixed it yet. But I said I would fix it. So you go. Man, I thought that was a whole lot funnier than I, just to be honest with you. Thank you, Bunny. Thank you, Sally. I appreciate it. God bless you. Glad you're here today. Um, this idea that... Sometimes you just can go to God and say, hey, God, I know I talked about this yesterday, but I would just like to remind you again, things haven't changed. Still a tough place. Lord, I still got grief in my heart. It's still killing me. Can you, can you help me? Lord, th there is this need, and you know it. Or you know what? It could be someone you're praying for. And you say, Lord, I just want to remind you again of these people. So we have this opportunity. A checkup of our spiritual health. What does he need to say to me? And as we distribute the elements, think on these things and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Would you do that? The Lord himself ordained this holy sacrament. He commanded his disciples to partake of the bread and wine, emblems of his broken body and shed blood. This is his table. The feast is for his disciples. Let all those who have with true repentance forsaken their sins and have believed in Christ unto salvation, draw near and take these emblems, and by faith 
partake of the life of Jesus Christ to your soul's comfort and joy. Let us remember that it is the memorial of the death and passion of our Lord, also a token of his coming again. Let us not forget that we are one at one table with the Lord. Let us pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, hear us, we most humbly ask you. Grant that as we receive this bread and wine, according to the holy institution of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, in remembrance of his passion and death, we may be made partakers of the benefits of his atoning sacrifice. We are reminded that in the same night that our Lord was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. May we come before you in true humility and faith as we partake of this holy sacrament through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If those who are helping me this morning would gather with me at the table. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was broken for you, preserve you blameless and everlasting life. Take and, re take and eat in remembrance that Christ died for you. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you, preserve you blameless and everlasting life. 
Take and drink this in remembrance that he died for you and be thankful. Let's praise his name in worship as we move towards our time of prayer this morning. This morning, as we go to our time of prayer, if you'd like to join me and pray for one of our foundry requests, I invite you to come and do that. Lord God, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your presence. We're thankful, Father, that we belong to you. We pray that we would live in such a way, a life of obedience that would be pleasing to you and attractive to the world. Father, we ask for your help, that you would speak through us where you have placed us as your ambassadors that we would live lives that would be attractive to the people around us, and they would turn and ask us about the hope that we have. Father, we glorify your holy name for this relationship that you have provided for us through your Son, a relationship that we have uh, with your Holy Spirit who empowers us and cleanses us and uses us as he speaks through us to people who are in need. 
Father, as a local church, we thank you for the opportunities that we have to minister alongside of you. We have these prayer requests that have been written out, men and women who have asked for your help, and we ask, Lord God, that you would be with every request that has been made. We ask that you would go to these people, you would speak to their hearts and assure them that you're working on their behalf. Father, we pray for that ministry, the ladies and the men, and we ask, Lord God, that you would just continue to watch over that place and help them to have an impact in the lives of people who have been addicted to what they cannot change. Would you empower those people, keep them clean, we ask, and be with them every step of every day. Help us as we minister to them, as we work with them. Father, you have our, our people that we are working with, speaking to, the witnessing projects that we have. Help us in these days to speak for you to those people. We ask that you would be with our homebound, those that are no longer able to be here. We pray, Lord God, that you would just stand by them and speak to them today in a way that they would recognize your voice. We pray for those who are watching online and that they would sense and know your love today and the love of this congregation. Father, we pray that you would protect our campus, would watch over us, that as we begin to think about the 4th of July, you would help us as we make preparations for that and people might know this place as a place where the Lord God resides. Father, we ask that you would be with our world, with all the chaos and uncertainty that we face that we would be a rock, that we would be a city on a hill, that we would be the salt and light of the earth, that we might proclaim your name and your goodness to those who live beside us, who work alongside of us, those people that are in desperate need of hope and help, that you would help us stand to them with your voice. Now, Father, we pray that you continue to work with us and watch over us for we pray these things, Jesus, in your name. Amen. And you may be seated. Well, I'll be honest with you. As a pastor, it's good to hear the rustle of paper as you're praying for people. We'll continue to leave these up, and on Wednesday night, we'll be praying over them as well. Um, our contact information is available for you. You need to get a hold of me. Uh, offering plate is in the back, and we appreciate your faithfulness. Just be up front with you. We had the slope guy come by, and uh, he looked at our situation, and uh, his company is in the process now of beginning some stuff. Uh, the first thing he said, we're going to have to clear out that vegetation. I said, to the bottom of the hill? I mean, you know, why he's down there. I mean, you know, clear all that out, and they're going to take a look at some of the problem areas. Uh, we know that it's going to be an expensive project but it's not one your church board has voted on as much as they've said, oh, we just have to get that done. Uh, we're going to lose that area, and we need to make sure that uh, we protect the property of God. So uh, your faithfulness in your tithing and in your giving helps us to do that, and we appreciate that. Uh, gym night, this Tuesday night, pickleball. Now we also have um, cornhole. So it's everything you could possibly desire. Someone said tiddlywinks. We said, oh, that's so last year, so we're not doing tiddlywinks this year. But all kind of stuff to do. If you just want to come and watch, I can assure you it's worth the drive, all right? Uh, please, we're going to have to ask people to refrain from gambling, betting on who will be the first to fall. It's inappropriate at church. People will fall. Listen, we're going to uh, hold off on Wednesday nights for the next couple of weeks. The next time we're going to have Wednesday night is 7 6. I'm going to take some personal time, and I am also going to PALCON, and it starts on a Wednesday night. PALCON is pastors and leaders in the Church of the Nazarene. It'll be at Trevecca Nazarene University, and they have all these excellent speakers, and it's a time for a renewal and a time of, what's another word that means renewal? Revival. There we go. And also just encouragement. And so uh, the church board is sending me up there, and I'm looking forward to eating the cafeteria food again because it's been a while. So. Just a great time. You'll pray for me as I'm up there. I know you will. Good to have you here. Uh, Brett, you and Mary, last Sunday? Brett and Mary's last Sunday. We're sending them to Columbia so they can play bingo and pick a ball out there. And uh, we, are, we have been blessed with your service and your attitude. And uh, I personally will miss you guys. You've been a great help to me. 
and get a chance, shake their hand, pat them on the back as they uh, head out to uh, their new job and their new um, home. So God bless y'all. Hey, together, let's read the Apostles' Creed. Would you do that with me? Here's what we believe. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Church of Jesus Christ, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, there are just two other things I need to mention before we leave. One, did anybody in here last night have dinner? Did you actually have something to eat last night? You did, Connie? How in the world did you have any room? I could not think of anything. I, my mother's fried chicken would not have been a good meal last night. I'm just telling you. We had such a good time at the Lowry's. We appreciate everything they did and their son Kevin and all the boat rides. and all. Thank you for all of that stuff that all of you brought, and thank you guys. No, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. The other thing I need to mention is that on July 3rd, we're going to be baptizing again. And so, if you have not been baptized or somebody in your family would like to be baptized, on July 3rd, we'll be baptized. We have seven names so far. So, my arm is still sore, i just be honest with you. But we do praise God for the um, influence that we have in the lives of these people as they're on their path to wholeness and wellness. So, if you'd like to do that, just let me know, and I appreciate it. Receive this benediction. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your love, for your sacrifice. We thank you for your forgiveness. Send us now to be your instruments of forgiveness wherever we go. Father, would you take care of us? Would you watch over us? Would you just remind us of your love? We pray this week. Holy Spirit, fill us with your power. Guide our thoughts and words as we speak for you, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed this morning to go to love and serve our King.